Hey everybody, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be doing some tests here with this quadcopter that I built. It has 1806 sized motors, okay? These are 20, 2280 kV. I'm using the Flycolor Raptor S Tower. It's a 12 amp brushless ESC all-in-one kind of deal. This one has the built-in OSD, which I do have a problem with because you can't get rid of the thing that says Flycolor on the top left of the screen but anyway so this is the deal here this is these are all the specs just for reference what we're going to be testing today and i'm just bringing you along with me okay so don't expect any kind of like conclusive scientific data testing or anything like that we're just going to test some stuff out you know the the old-fashioned hillbilly way i guess we're going to be ch checking uh two things one thing is i want to get some data uh very rough data on the efficiency of these motors and more specifically I'm trying to figure out the amp draw because I want to see <clears throat> because I want to see how big of a propeller that I can put on this baby and and uh, and just kind of check the efficiency and all that stuff now I'm going to try it with these uh, propellers here these tri-blade Dalprop uh, T5040 V2s and then I'm going to recharge the battery swap out the props and these are Gemfan 6030 props so they have they're six inches across and they have a 30 or a three inch actually pitch but so I want to see what the, the differences are in terms of uh, the draw on the battery be using this battery and we're gonna fly this guy outside for a certain number of minutes and then we're going to bring the battery back in charge up the battery and check and see how many milliamps we're putting back into this battery and we're going to, we're going to use the same battery for um, consistency so okay let's go take this guy outside and have some fun with it oh and I have the GoPro on here this quad is really not meant to carry a GoPro because it just doesn't doesn't have um, quite as much power as your typical racer freestyle mini quad but I put it on there because I thought if I do want to do some, you know, uh, chill plane chasing or something, want to see if I can do it. And also, uh, it puts the motors under a bit more of a load, which is, um, I think it's just going to help kind of get some more uh, dramatic data, I suppose. One more thing, though. I'm going to use my high-tech scale here. Um, I know, this is really sad. This is embarrassing, guys. I know, I know. So just... Go ahead and laugh, but this is the only scale that I have right now. I don't have one of those fancy digital, you know, scales. This I only have like this, like 40, 50 year old scale or something, and that's made for measuring flour. Toss the battery on there, this battery, and we're looking at pretty much smack dab on a pound if this thing is accurate. Uh, but that's that's what I got. So we're gonna roll with that. All right, let's go. I'm gonna plug the battery in here. I'm gonna set a timer for four minutes, and I'm gonna fly for four minutes, just in a hover. So I'm I'm trying to just keep it about five or so feet off of the ground, just keep it in a hover, moving up and down, you know, as little as possible. But it's just it's not super easy. It's gonna happen. But this way we can get a pretty. We should be able to get a pretty good baseline for just how much power it takes to hover. Okay, I've just landed it. Um, just to note, the motors are just dead cold and the battery is only slightly warm. 477 milliamp hours. Sixty thirty gem fan propellers and check out those tight tolerances right there. It doesn't quite touch it, but it is very close. Just this for four minutes. Okay, let's see how the battery does. It says here it has put in four hundred and forty five milliamp hours. Okay, let's take a look at the data that we got here. So, I've uh, pre-crunched all the numbers here just so you wouldn't have to sit through me trying to figure all this stuff out. Big thanks to RC Groups and Dave C and all those other guys on there from like 13 years ago because I looked up the formula and it, that made it much simpler. And in case you're wondering, the formula that I used to, to find our total uh, amp draw 
was uh, you basically take the total milliamp hours used, which in this case was 477, convert them to amp hours, so 0.477 amp hours, multiply that by 60 minutes, and you get 28.6 amp minutes. Take the amp minutes, divide it by the total flight time, and then in this case we get 7.1 amps total. And if we divide that by four for the, each motor, kind of you know roughly on average, I think that makes sense, uh, we get 1.79 amps per motor, <clears throat> which is really, really, really low. Uh, that's that. So that's that's really cool. Um, so that means that really I could I could put a uh, a much uh, I could I could put a lot more load on this because there's not it's really not drawing very much at all. So which I find very surprising. Anyway, so that's what we did with that one. So that's the uh, that's the tri blade. We have the tri blade on the left, the bi blade, the sixty thirty on the right, and here we did the same thing. We got six point six eight amps, one point six seven amps per motor. We have a thirty two milliamp hour or seven percent difference in the amount of battery that was used uh, between the two types of propellers, and then. You see also here, between the amps used, it's also 7%. So that's one way we know that I probably did this mostly right, because we get the same percentage of milliamps used as to the amps drawn. So what does this actually tell me? Well, it tells me that the the 6030 prop is slightly more efficient, which is pretty much what I was expecting. Um, also, importantly, it tells me, it, or at least it gives me a ballpark idea of what the total amp draw is for each one. So that way, uh, because these ESCs are rated for 12 amps, and I'm, I believe that's 12 amps per motor. If that is the case, then that means that uh, it's pretty dang efficient. So as far as the 7% difference, is that really enough to matter? Well, probably not if it's if it's just just 7%, if that's all it was, but I have a feeling that if I wanted to do longer duration flights or uh, or fly uh, faster over just more like straight long straight uh, runs, I think that the bi blade would definitely be better because you'd have less uh, less overall surface area in the way of the wind. Because when the quadcopter when it goes from being uh, uh, horizontal like this and then it turns I think you have a lot less resistance with the uh, with the by blade here so that was fun wasn't that fun so this is something that uh, you might want to do and this could give you an idea for how to calculate some stuff and do some testing on your quadcopter I know I learned something here which I think is pretty cool thanks for watching and see you next time